which players on the Minnesota Wild roster make up their core for next year and beyond, we discuss today on Locked on Wild. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen every day. And just as a reminder, Locked On Wild is free and available wherever we listen to podcasts. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we take a look at which players for the Minnesota Wild make up their current core heading past this year and into their future. We'll look at some players who uh, do not figure into the long-term plans, complementary players, and the core group. Plus, we will take a look at some of the big things that we have planned for you as we gear up for the trade deadline on Monday. So big show today. Happy to be along with you. My name is Seth Topol, and uh, today's show is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and make sure to tell them Locked On sent you. As I said, my name is Seth Topol, host of Locked On Wild, veteran Minnesota sports content producer with over a decade's worth of experience covering all of your favorite Minnesota sports teams and now fully invested into the Minnesota Wild. Happy to have you along on a Tuesday edition of the show. Mentioned we have a lot coming up for you over the uh, the rest of this week into Monday's trade deadline. Uh, there are a lot of angles to discuss for the uh, the deadline, and so took the opportunity to write down some of the things that uh, we will be taking a look at, obviously, today, trying to address uh, and identify the current core for this Minnesota Wild team. Uh, we will also take a look at some uh, potential trade targets uh, later on this week. We're going to look at uh, the buyer's guide to the trade deadline. We'll also look at the seller's guide to the trade deadline. So uh, we're going to try to break things up for you into uh, to delicious digestible morsels as uh, as we gear up for Monday's trade deadline. So we're going to start it today with looking at the pieces of this roster that are absolutely vital to team success. We'll look at the players that have assisted in the wild uh, having the season that they are and some players who probably not going to be around past this year with how they have performed this season. So uh, we'll start with the players that are not in the long-term plans and we'll move through the complementary and the core players. Now, I would encourage a ton of discussion with this topic. So if you uh, if you disagree with uh, what I put in, um, if I put a particular player in a category that you uh, don't think they should be in there, and I, I can guarantee there will be one at least that uh, that is in a spot that many people do not uh, think you should be in. Uh, let us know on YouTube. Let us know on Twitter uh, how you would uh, would break up this current wild roster. Love the uh, the conversation. Let's keep that going. So, first and foremost, players on the wild roster right now that do not factor into the long term plans. Let's start with the obvious one: Jordy Ben as the seventh defenseman. I. I he he's had uh, he's had some moments where he's looked okay. He's had moments where he he has not looked okay, and so I think it's safe to say that he will probably look elsewhere in the off season, and the Wild will probably look elsewhere as well. Maybe even a situation too where if you want to give somebody in Iowa a little bit more of a look, that uh, Ben could be a potential trade candidate depending on how these next couple of games go for the Wild. Um, might be a situation there where you could get a pick, a, a later round pick uh, for a team that needs some veteran defensemen to, uh, to help out in the back end. But either way, I don't think he'll be back next year. Um, on the defense side, a guy who started the year with some promise, looked like 
he was uh, was playing well, but now it seems like things have caught up to him. And of course, is uh, Alex Goligoski. It just seems like he's missing a gear as the rest of the season goes on. And so there were discussions when the season started about trying to sign Goligoski to a, a uh, long-term deal with a shorter annual value. I think both teams are going to say, hey, this was fun to, to get him here uh, to his home state, but I, I don't envision a scenario in which Goligoski comes back, especially with salary cap crunch that will start next year. It's just, it, it's a luxury that you can have, you know, as a, as a playoff contender, as a guy who can play in that bottom four and, um, and be a veteran defenseman for your team. But if the Wild are going to begin to kind of get a little, get a little younger and maybe not a rebuild, but a retool, um, that's, that's a spot where you just, I think you just would rather give those minutes to a younger, younger player. So I, I don't think Goligoski will be back. Um, Nick Bugstad, I'm 50-50 on. He, he may be a player that, uh, that the Wild look to try to bring back in like a veteran minimum next year as, uh, as a veteran guy. He's, he's had great moments this year when he's played. But again, um, these are the spots where the Wild are going to have to really weigh whether they want somebody to come in on that veteran minimum or if you just want to give that spot to a, a rookie who could potentially surprise you a little bit. So... Bukestad, it's going to come down to the money, but either way, you know, you maybe do this one year at a time, but two, three years down the road, I don't think he's somebody that factors in to, uh, to what the Wild are going to be looking to do during the Parisi Suter buyouts and beyond when the window for their um, success and their contention fully opens. So I'll put uh, Bugstad in the not in the long-term plans category either. I'm also putting Nico Sturm in this category. Nico Sturm has had an interesting year, to say the least, now being a healthy scratch more recently, uh, more frequently uh, here for the Wild. I think this will be another situation where due to the salary cap situation, another team will be able to give Sturm more money for a little bigger role than the Wilds can afford to offer him. And so it, I, I think fourth line center is going to be a spot that uh, the Wilds can fill internally. And so I think uh, Sturm is going to factor into, um, not into the long-term plans heading past this season. So just four players in that category. Now we'll debate on some others. That, uh, that maybe fit into those plans. But again, my view on one particular player uh, is going to be substantially different than, uh, than a lot of people. So if you're looking for him in this category, you're going to have to wait a little bit. Uh, we will continue, and we'll look at the complementary players for this Minnesota Wild team, those players that help your franchise get to where you want to go. Uh, that is coming up as we continue today's episode of Lockdown Wilds after this. It is that time of year again as college basketball's NCAA tournament is finally upon us. From all the latest odds, contest, and player props, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all of your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. The only spot that you can keep your bracket perfect. And it's not just basketball. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. That's all at Bet Online, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. And we will continue to plug this all week, but uh, just a reminder. On Monday, March 21st at 2.30 Central Time, you can tune in to Locked On Fantasy Hockey's live deadline reaction show. 
to get the all the on ice fantasy and betting analysis you need from hosts Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone with appearances from our roster of local experts. Plus, you can catch our own live show at 2 o'clock Central Time for our immediate reaction to the Minnesota Wilds' moves or lack thereof. You can uh, find Locked on Fantasy Hockey wherever you listen to podcasts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wilds and looking at the players that we've put into the complimentary category. Now, these aren't like your franchise cornerstones. These are players that when you're making a run to the playoffs, they are extremely helpful to uh, to what you're trying to build. They are good players, and uh, they're players that, you know, th- those are usually the spots that you're you're building around your core. You're uh, you're taking players and you're adding to that mix that you have um currently with that core. So, Complimentary players, here's who I had on that list. We'll start with the Deweys, Connor Dewar and Brandon Duhame. Now, these two guys are part of a fourth line that, yes, has struggled recently, but a fourth line that really just goes out there and grinds. And for this wild team, especially early in the season before the line combo started to get rolling, that fourth line was critical to uh, the Wilds' early season success and to uh, helping them kind of establish the offense. So these are two guys that, you know, just hustle. They outwork their opponents. They uh, are not afraid to be physical. And so those are guys that, you know, you you want to have in those spots because when the Kaprizov line's not working, when the Fiala line at the time wasn't working, you want to have a line you can throw out there that's going to win you battles and help you get back into the mix. And we've seen in the past, you know, there have been veteran players on the fourth line for the Minnesota Wild that have have struggled substantially. And you know, you bring in these two guys and they're not they're not going to score you a ton of goals, but they are going to give you some uh, gritty quality minutes. Um on the ice. And so I'm putting Dewar and Duhame both in the complimentary category because, you know, it's a dirty job playing on the fourth line. Somebody's got to do it though. And so uh, those two both on the complimentary list, in my opinion. I also have the third line D pairing of Dmitry Kulikov and John Merrill on the complimentary list. Again, it's uh, it's gritty minutes playing on that, that bottom D pairing, but uh, those guys up until this recent slide, they have uh, have had good moments this season when they have been paired together and when they haven't had to stray too far out of those uh, third-line responsibilities. So, you know, again, a, a luxury. Some other teams would throw, you know, younger players into those spots, but uh, Kulikov and Merrill have both been around enough to where uh, they were able to come in and uh, and take those spots. Now, they are locked up, both of them, to multi-year deals. So barring a trade in the offseason, those two will be part of this group uh, for, the, um, for the next couple of years. So not, not players that are going to carry your team by themselves, but are going to, um, they're going to help you more than they hurt you. So Kulikov and Merrill both on that list. Uh, I'm putting both goalies in the complementary category. Now, that's with the caveat that there is another goalie um, that I have put onto the core list that's a few years away. I think we all know who I'm talking about there. But, you know, Talbot is... Talbot's getting up there. He's at 33, I believe. And, you know, we, I think we have seen some good spots from Talbot in his wild tenure, but, um, you know, I think at this point you pretty much know what you're getting. And so he's not going to be a goalie that can, can save you multiple wins over the course of the season. He's going to give you most 
of the uh, the average saves. He's going to give you some above average saves. And so complimentary because he's he's not an Andre Vasilevsky. He's not Mark Andre Fleury. He's not any of those other guys who are saving you like eight or nine wins a season. He he still has good moments. And so I'll put him in the complimentary. I'm going to put Capo Kakinen in the complimentary as well. You know, it's still it's still young enough into Capo's career that um, he certainly is capable of of taking it to the next step with uh, with the opportunity. Um, but at this point, you know, it it just if you put if you put a better goalie in there, I think the results for this team get better. And so. Capo certainly is a a complimentary player for this team, but I'm I'm not putting him in the core group for this wild team. Now, these next couple of guys, I would maybe have made more of an argument to the core early on in the season, but since their their numbers have started to come back down to earth, I'm putting them in the complimentary category. Um, at this point in the season. If I would have done this earlier in the season, this list probably would have looked substantially different. But I'm putting Marcus Foligno and Ryan Hartman in the complementary category. You know, they're they're having career seasons, but when they are at their best, Foligno, part of that grief line, um, being physical out there on the ice, giving you goals here and there, helping kind of be the offensive portion of that uh, that third line but you know that's it, he he's not going to necessarily take over a game or a stretch the way that a Kirill Kaprizov or a Matt Boldy um, have or a Kevin Fiala have so I'm putting uh, I'm putting Felino in the complimentary category as with Ryan Hartman you know playing center this year as he did at the end of last season it started off great. Numbers have uh, really started to come back down to earth. Ultimately, I still think that his best fit is as a wing for this team or as a center um, for one of the other couple of lines on this team. When the Wild do get a number one center, I think he will be moved out of that spot um, to try to help a little more consistency for that top line. So complimentary for Hartman for me, for sure. You know, Jordan Greenway is another player that's intriguing. Signed the uh, the extension with this wild team. He brings an element of size and physicality that has been pointed out by a lot of people, and rightfully so, that this team has missed, especially during this skid. And that's another thing that we'll be talking about uh, whether it be this week or next week after the trade deadline, is some of the things that have set the Wilds' division opponents apart from them, especially here in the second half. Brian on YouTube pointed this out. And this is a really, really good, astute observation that we will get to uh, in that uh, the Wild have struggled against their divisional opponents here, especially in the second half of the season. And so it bears looking into the reasons that that's happened. And part of it is that size and that physicality. So Greenway brings that for you, but offensively he is sporadic. And so he's more of a complimentary player for me. Um, if if you're looking at taking this roster and putting it into different parts, he's complimentary for me because he's a great addition to this team. But again, if you are looking at the group of players you absolutely cannot get rid of, I can't put him in that category. So complimentary for sure. Just uh, and this again is just my list. If, if there's anybody that you think should be complimentary or should be core after we get to that point, definitely let us know because uh, the whole point of this is just try to get the conversation going. Try to get those, those conversation juices flowing uh, so that we can try to see who this team builds around the rest of this year and beyond. Uh, we'll get to that core list. I should also mention, too, um, and I think we'll finish with him. Moving on to the core. 
Freddie Goudreau is a total wild card here because you look at what the Fiala Boldy line has done, and he's been the center for that line. He's been contributing to the success of that line. We didn't really know what we were getting from him coming into this season, and he just continues to he continues to just hang with those guys. So does that make him, you know, a complimentary player to those two, or is he a guy that is absolutely essential to that line's success? I really don't know the answer to that. Uh, it, it will be something that we learn more about as the rest of the season unfolds. But I, in putting this list together, I put Goudreau between the core and the complimentary because much like what we saw with Victor Rask in uh, Zuccarello and Kaprizov's success when he was their center. I mean, he he offers more upside offensively, I think, than Rask did, but I, I, I don't know. You look at it and you think that he, he shouldn't be able to keep up with those guys, and yet here we are. So I'm putting Goudreau in between those two categories, uh, and we'll try to put him into a firm spot once the off season gets here, because, you know, if he starts to struggle, then yeah, he looks like more of a complimentary player, but if he continues to provide uh, opportunities for those two to just go nuts, maybe he is a core player. I, I really don't know. So we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that and we will finish today's episode of lockdown while talking core and key players for this current roster. We'll do that after this. Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning like is your Odyssey an LX or an EX and why wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Plus, you can save money and time when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30, 50, 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rockauto.com is a family business serving do it yourselfers for over 20 years. And rockauto.com's prices are reliably low for every customer. So head to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Make sure to write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. All at rockauto.com. Final segment of today's episode of Locked On Wild. And again, thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen every day. And uh, fi finishing off today's episode of identifying the core members of this wild team, here's what we got. So obviously, the core starts Kirill Kaprizov. And in, in identifying this core, these are the players that you absolutely cannot replace on this team that have become essential parts of the puzzle that uh, Bill Guerin is going to look to build around for the next couple of years. So Kirill Kaprizov, firmly in that list. When all is said and done this year, he's going to become the, um, most, the, the most prolific point total scorer in a single season in Minnesota Wild history. He is the straw and the glass that stirs the drink that is this Minnesota Wild offense. They're just there's no other way to put it. So he is 100% a part of this core and a piece to build around over the next several seasons. Another player that has entered into the conversation is Matt Boldy. He has looked tremendous since he first hopped up to the NHL level, looking worthy of a player that um, could himself become uh, a, a vital piece of this uh, this Minnesota Wild franchise. So Kaprizov, Boldy, I'm putting Matt Zuccarello in this list in the midst of a career season and absolutely a um, an elite one-two combo with uh, Kaprizov. You, you look at some of these combos throughout the NHL. 
You've got, you know, Connor McDavid. You've got Leon Dreisaitl. You've got Nathan McKinnon. You've got Miko Rantanen. All of the best scorers in the league have a number two option. And the Wilds may even have a little bit more than that because they have Zuccarello. They, uh, they have the guy that I'm putting into the core list. And yes, I know there's going to be a huge discussion about this in the offseason. Kevin Fiala needs to be put in this wild core. Career high in points this season. He's tied it with like 28, 27 games to play. 25 years old. He has found a line chemistry that just works with Matt Boldy and with Freddie Goudreau. That line has worked, especially during the, uh, the skid that this team is currently on. Those guys continue to score, and Fiala continues to look like a completely different player. Now, what changed between the beginning of the season? Because I, I know one of the big sticking points for giving Fiala an extension is that he has those lulls that uh, in which he he really doesn't offer much from a scoring standpoint. Now, he has not really had one of those since uh, since Matt Boldy joined uh, the Wild roster. So you could potentially you're paying for in Fiala's case, you're paying for the player that he currently is, and accepting that there may be stretches like the beginning of the season where he wasn't scoring as much. But let's also factor in that the Wild had two, at the time, mostly defense-oriented guys on that same line with him. Freddie Goudreau has been on that same line um, for the Wilds with Kevin Fiala pretty much all season. He's not a huge driver of offense like Fiala is. And so... That line was just super top heavy until Fiala got some help. And once Boldy entered the conversation, that line's got way more balance and multiple players that can attack at the same time. So I put Fiala into the core knowing full well that there's going to have to be a trade done in the offseason to keep him around. So even, even knowing that, I fully accept it. But this team needs to find a way to keep him around long term. Other players that I put on that list include uh, Jewel Erickson Eck. He he signed to that long term deal. He is the best center on this roster at, at present, and so you know that's that's not something that you can just give away. He's he's a great defensive presence on this team. And, um, you know, he is definitely a part of what the Wild are going to be building going forward. So Erickson X on the list. Jonas Brodine and Jared Spurgeon. I know the defense has struggled over the uh, the last three weeks. But those guys, you know, are, are as good of defensemen as you'll find in the NHL. And I would be shocked if anything other than uh, building around them is done to this decor over the, uh, the next several seasons. So Brodine and Spurgeon on the core list as well. I've got Marco Rossi on the core list, even though he's not currently on the roster, because uh, Bill Guerin made some comments on Sirius Satellite Radio yesterday in which um, he said that the team has no intentions of uh, trading Rossi, and rightfully so. So you figure Rossi is going to hop up to this team next year and will be a, a pivotal member of this team's success, giving them another true center uh, that is so desperately needed on this roster. And Jesper Wallstead, I'm putting him on the list as well. He's still he's still a few years away, but he is such a desperately needed like franchise goalie. We're talking like the Vasilevsky level or um or some of the other good goalies throughout the league. He is so much that, that he needs to be massive parts of the Wilds' plans going forward. So Wallstead is on that list for me as well. Um, and that's, 
you know, that that's the full roster breakdown that we have. Didn't really go into the prospects um, as much because we'll uh, we'll do something similar for them, hopefully this week or next um, with uh, with one of our prospect correspondents. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, that is going to wrap it up for today's episode of Locked on Wild. Now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure your second listen of the day is Locked on Fantasy Hockey. Host Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone help you become the expert of your fantasy league. Locked on Fantasy Hockey is free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. Later this week, as mentioned, we will take a look at the buyer's guide to the trade deadline as well as the seller's guide and some uh, names that the Wild have been recently linked to and whether or not they could be potential options. So keep an eye out for all of that. Make sure you're following along with Locked on Wild wherever you listen to your podcast, as well as on social media. Locked on Madness is in progress. Make sure to check out today's matchups and vote on our Twitter account at Locked on Wild. We will keep you up to date with everything Minnesota Wild related because if a puck drops, if news breaks, or a trade occurs, Locked on Wild has you covered with new episodes every Monday through Friday as parts of the Locked on Podcast Network.